When you hear the word bug, you'll probably think of anything from spiders to cockroaches to ants to basically anything that has more than four legs, sometimes wings, sometimes bites or stings or tickles when it walks on you. But what if I told you in reality, true bugs are really just a small subset of that entire group of animals that I just described to you, with very specific traits that you could use to identify an insect as to whether it's a bug or not. And today, we are out in the wetlands of southern Florida to look for these true bugs. This massive insect right here, a beautiful Florida leaf-footed bug, is the perfect example of what the blueprint of a bug's body should be. This insect specifically is called the Florida leaf-footed bug because of those highly modified hind legs that are very flattened to look like a dead leaf, and that helps them camouflage very well on shrubs where they like to perch on. In a more general sense though, you can tell that this insect is a true bug or a member of the suborder Heteroptera by using a number of shared characteristics in this group. Most importantly, all true bugs share this sharp proboscis that they hide underneath their head. You don't normally see these unless you're looking at it from an underside view, as in this one, and you can see that line underneath its face is that sharp proboscis. Different bugs use this proboscis for different reasons. Leaf-footed bugs are herbivorous, using it to drink plant juice, while some other bugs are predatory and use it to inject venom into other insects and suck out the liquefied insides. Most bugs also have a very similar head shape to one another, as well as a flattened, shield-like dorsal side. While not all true bugs have wings, those that do have wings have very hardened and flattened wings that they hold overlapped above their abdomen to further enforce that shield-like appearance. While most bugs that you're probably familiar with have that similar blueprint bug shape, like the leaf-footed bug, such as assassin bugs and stink bugs, what I want to look for now are some true bugs that stray away from that blueprint shape. This right here is some sort of rice bug, a genus that is extremely hard, sometimes impossible to identify the species. Rice bugs are also herbivorous and are very well adapted to living in areas with tall thin grasses as evidenced by their long and narrow appearance. They also secrete a very distinctive smell when bothered. While most bugs like to live in areas that are close to water, some bugs have hyper evolved their bodies to stray so far away from the blueprint that they could actually spend all or most of their time in the water. And while it is unfortunate that there is some styrofoam in the water that I did take out of the water after filming this, it made for a great place to see these water striders in contrast. These ones were probably the species Neogerus hessione, the most common water strider species in Florida. In this different spot, there seems to be a congregation of another species of water strider. They're very far away though, and I can't tell exactly what species it is, so I'll have to net one up and try and look at it up close in order to tell. Now that we could look at this water strider up close, this is definitely in the genus Rheumatobates, and is probably the species Rheumatobates tenuapes, a species that appears to not be too commonly seen here in Florida. Water striders like this one are predatory, and use their sharp proboscis to feed on insects and spiders as well as other invertebrates that they could find on the surface of the water. Their front two legs are very tiny, but their back four legs are very long and thin. So far we've seen land-dwelling bugs, bugs that go near the water, bugs that live on the surface of the water, but this bug right here is very special in the fact that they are completely aquatic, spending all their time underneath the surface of the water. This is a water scorpion in the genus Renatra. Water scorpions in general are highly specialized bugs that have evolved specifically for hunting underneath the water. They have praying mantis-like raptorial forelegs that they use to catch their prey usually other aquatic invertebrates, though they are capable of taking down small fish. And, like every other bug, use their sharp proboscis to eat it. Ranatra in specific are highly elongated water scorpions, which provides them with almost perfect camouflage where they hunt, as they are ambush predators that hunt within the weeds and other plants and algae that live underneath the water. It's been so long since I've seen a Ranatra water scorpion, so I'm so glad to have seen one again. And as you can see, Right when I put it back into the water, it has started doing its characteristic breathing behavior. You can see that its entire body is underneath the water, perfectly camouflaged for ambush hunting. But the tip of that very long and slender abdomen is touching the surface of the water, and you could even see a little bubble forming. 
That is the Renatra, breathing, using the tip of its abdomen like a snorkel. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where I catch a bunch of cicadas, a very close relative to the true bugs.